A toast, Zack said, raising his glass. He looked completely different than the devious man she had first sat down with. Two new business partners. Hazel nodded, gently clinking his glass. Before she could take a sip, the door to the meeting room burst open. Hazel turned around to see Theo panting furiously in the doorway. She set down her glass with an indelicate clunk and gaped at the man who was supposed to be out of town for a meeting. What is he thinking? She wanted to scream. Mr. Maynard, Zack said in greeting. Hazel wasn't surprised he recognized him. Maybe they had even worked together before. Zack stood from the table, looking unruffled by the interruption. I wasn't expecting you, but you're welcome to join us. We haven't eaten yet. Theo grunted in response, his face twitching like he wanted to snarl instead. He looked between Hazel and the man, and Zack seemed to understand the situation. I just remembered another meeting I have to get to, Zack sputtered. We can talk about the business deal another time, Miss St. James. You know how to contact me. With that, Zack fled. Hazel couldn't blame him. From the look on Theo's face, he probably thought they were about to have a heated lover's spat. So Zack was smart to get out of there. She remained seated, delicately dabbing her mouth with a napkin in case she had dribbled any wine when Theo had kicked the door in like a barbarian. I thought you had a meeting today, Theo, she said as casually as possible. I did, Theo said. Sorry to interrupt your date. Hazel threw down her napkin and stood, crossing the room quickly. She didn't back down from his piercing stare. She bit back her anger, knowing it wouldn't be productive when he was already beyond reason. When she stopped in front of him, nearly toe to toe, he growled and turned around. She patiently stepped around to face him, putting her hands on his shoulders to keep him from turning away from her again. I don't know what you think this was, she said slowly, but you just ruined my business meeting. Theo frowned as the embarrassment from his rash actions sunk in. Her hands held him in place, so he closed his eyes to escape her glare and took a deep breath. He had never felt jealous before, and he didn't know how to handle it. He finally opened his eyes, seeing the beautiful face mere inches from his own. She stepped even closer until their bodies were flush and linked her hands behind his neck. Let's go, he whispered, wanting to turn tail and run. No way, she said, wrapping her arms around him tighter. You sure are brave. <laughs> Theo let out a deep laugh. She jumped when his large hands pressed into her back, returning the embrace. She tucked her face into his neck, not knowing what else to say. She hoped the hug said everything she couldn't. Whatever this was between them was complicated, but she wanted to make it work, even if he didn't know how he felt yet. You can let go, he said gruffly after a moment. I don't want to. She insisted, squeezing him tighter. Eventually, he stepped back, and she dropped her arms. She stayed close, looking up at him with determination in her eyes. If any other woman he had dated had been so clingy or brash, he would have dumped them immediately. But there was something about the young woman in front of him. He didn't know what was different about her. Or maybe something was different about him. Theo, don't be angry. You're not as handsome when you're angry, she said, trying to lighten the mood. So, what was this about then? He asked, gesturing to the table. I was seeing if we could work with him on the project in southwest Atlanta. He works in real estate, she explained. I don't remember anyone else being part of the deal we discussed, he said. She could see the fire in his eyes begin to flare again, 
so she knew she needed to explain quickly. It was hard to think, though, when that look in her eye made something in her burn. Zack was working with Andrew, she explained, so I had to get him on our side and make the first move to outmaneuver Andrew. I want to cut off every single one of his resources, one by one. Theo thought about it before nodding, understanding her reasoning. He gave her a proud smile, gently running one hand up and down her arm. He liked the way she preened under the attention. It, unfortunately, reminded him of the way he saw Zack looking at her. I didn't like the idea of you meeting with another man, he admitted. It wasn't an apology, but Hazel recognized it as a step in the right direction. It was kind of hot when Theo got jealous, she had to admit. But she had no clue what he was thinking, barging in like that. Oh, come on, she teased. He didn't measure up to a fraction of you. Despite the smirk on her face and the teasing tone, he actually believed her. He would feel even more foolish if he had ditched a business meeting and she had given him a bunch of lies, but he was sure she was telling the truth. I should go back, he said. I'll make up some lie about a family emergency. She laughed and watched him go, letting out a sigh of relief. She hadn't been sure she could handle such a volatile situation, but she had somehow known exactly what to say. She would have to meet with Zack again. The bright side was that maybe they could skip the annoying flirtatious part in the beginning, now that he knew to take her seriously. But how had Theo known where to find me? Was he spying on me? She wondered. Hazel took her cell phone and dialed Josh's number. Hello, Hazel, he answered. I'm sorry, Mr. Maynard is still in a meeting. I'm not looking for Theo, she said, laughing to herself at Josh's polite lie to cover his boss's disappearance. I'm looking for you. She sounded cheerful, but that only made Josh nervous. What did you need? He asked uneasily. Don't be nervous, Josh. I'm not going to bite, Hazel joked, finding his awkwardness endearing. She assumed he was uncomfortable talking to a woman, but Josh was just unsure how to address his boss's girlfriend, or whatever she was. I'm not nervous. <clears throat> so, what's up? Josh cleared his throat. It's just... She hesitated. Do you know if Theo sent anyone to spy on me? There was no point in beating around the bush. Josh would know Theo better than she would. Like surveillance? No, he wouldn't do that. Don't worry, he said with confidence. He knew that such underhanded tactics weren't his boss's style. Although he would never understand how Mr. Maynard thought, he knew his values and principles, and he wouldn't hire someone to investigate a woman he was involved with. You're sure? Hazel asked. Josh's confidence that Theo wasn't that kind of man was deeply reassuring. I'm positive. Did you need anything else? Josh asked, looking at the time. There's actually one more thing I was hoping you could help me with. Surely there's video surveillance around Theo's house. I was hoping to take a look at this morning's surveillance footage. That's something you could do, right? Ava and Andrew still didn't know about her relationship with Theo, so it didn't seem likely that they had been involved. The only way someone would know about her and Theo would be if someone saw her leave Theo's house that morning. Sure, I'll send it to you right away, Josh said. In moments, Hazel received an email from Josh with a video attached. No one could say the man wasn't efficient. She opened the video, fast-forwarding until she saw herself enter the frame. Sure enough, as soon as she walked past, a car across the street pulled away from the curb and left. Hazel went back and zoomed in on the window, recognizing the person watching the house from the back seat. What are you doing, Sophia? Hazel asked the empty room. She didn't have time to confront Sophia right away, but she would have to do something. In her previous life, 
Hazel rarely attended society events, and they weren't in the same social circles, so she had never gotten to know the other woman. More than anything else, Hazel had been so obsessed with Andrew back then that she hadn't paid attention to anyone but him. I was so young and foolish, she thought with regret. But from the looks of it, Hazel had done enough this time around to make Sophia hate her and go out of her way to make things difficult for her.